A man steps out in front of cameras. He is handcuffed, shackled, chained, and says, sober, no drugs in my system. I did it when asked if he killed. But is he telling the truth? Let's find out. Wednesday, my Cajun cuties. Yes, it's me, Anne Marie, aka the Cajun Crime Queen from Caracol, Louisiana. Cajun born, Cajun bred. When I die, I'll be Cajun dead. I hope after this video that y'all like, subscribe, and comment, and don't forget to press on that notification bell so you never miss a video from me, Anne Marie. I hope y'all have a beverage. I hope you have a snuggle partner or a snuggle fur partner. Those are the best, and y'all are ready to hear a true crime case with yours truly. And as always, I want to know, how are y'all doing on this beautiful Wednesday evening? It is beautiful down here in Louisiana. It is very hot and steamy and humid, but we love living here, and we just embracing this hot, warm weather. I love the summer. I absolutely love the summer, I always have. And I'm just embracing the fact that I get to spend all summer with these beautiful children of mine. Ooh, I love it so much, I absolutely love it. I also wanna know, are y'all getting those tickers up? Are y'all drinking y'all water? Are y'all staying hydrated? Are y'all going for brisk walks every day? I'm telling y'all, just a 20, 30 minute walk first thing in the morning, get those endorphins up. Y'all going to feel amazing throughout the day. Trust me, y'all gonna feel wonderful. And as always, I wanna tell y'all that I really enjoy all the requests that y'all have been sending me. It touches me to know that y'all are watching my videos. Y'all are loving my content so far. I, it is greatly appreciated, and for you, I am truly grateful. Speaking of Louisiana, today we are going to be covering a case that is literally down the road from me, around the Hammond area in La Ranger, Louisiana. And I'm going to stop right there before we get into this case and tell y'all that we never think that anything bad is going to happen in our little part of the world. We as parents, we as mothers think that we can always protect our little space in the, in the world. We always think that nothing bad will ever happen. But this hit home for me this week because just this past week, literally down the road for me about 20 minutes, a murder happened. Not just any murder, but a brutal murder less than a week ago. Today, we are going to discuss the case of Callie, Jaylee, and Aaron Brunette. This past Thursday, 35-year-old Callie Brunette was found brutally murdered in her home in La Ranja, Louisiana by her father. Her two little girls, six-year-old Jaylee and four-year-old Aaron were missing along with Callie's 2012 black Chrysler car. No one had seen or heard from Callie since Tuesday night. When her father said she was taken out the garbage, he said nothing seemed off but no one can get in touch with Callie on Wednesday. So on Thursday, her father decided to go to her home in La Raja, Louisiana and found Callie brutally, brutally murdered from multiple sharp force injuries covered in blood. And her two beautiful little girls, Jaylee Six and Aaron Four, were nowhere to be found. Callie's father was frantic. He called the police. They issued an Amber Alert on Thursday the whole world was looking for these two little girls. I was actually editing a video when I saw the Amber Alert come up on my phone and I was freaked out. The first thing I said was, where are these two little girls? Where can they be? The second thing I said was, where is La Ranja, Louisiana? I had never heard of that. And it's actually down the road from me around the Hammond Independence I meet area, not far from me. I was frantic. I didn't know who this person was. I didn't know who had these babies. I didn't know if they were around my area. The whole world was frantic, especially, especially the state of Louisiana. Everyone was looking for these two beautiful little girls. But on Thursday, on June 13th, in Jackson, Mississippi, a suspicion person report was reported and this person led police on a brief chase, but he was detained by police 
and his name was Daniel Callahan. He was found along with Callie's car, but where was Callie's two beautiful little girls? Police knew this person has something to do with the murder of Callie and the whereabouts of her two young daughters. 36-year-old Daniel Callahan led Mississippi authorities to the car where six-year-old Jaylee Brunette was found alive. He also led Mississippi authorities to a wooded area where the body of four-year-old Aaron Brunette was found. Mississippi authorities also said in the area where the girls were found, there were cages and it may have been used for human trafficking. We don't know what police found around that area, but my heart goes out to the family and these two beautiful baby girls. Six-year-old Jaylee was taken to the hospital and sadly, four-year-old Aaron Brunette was found deceased. Daniel Callahan was booked in Jackson and is awaiting extradition back to Louisiana. On Friday, June 14th, he was charged with armed robbery with capital murder and sexual battery. And as of Monday, June 17th, 36-year-old Daniel Callahan is only facing one federal charge for now of felony kidnapping. Daniel C Callahan is facing murder charges in Louisiana and Mississippi. Y'all, this man, if he committed this crime as he says he did, as he admitted he did, this is the work of the devil. He is evil. He is an evil human being that doesn't deserve anything good in life. I cannot believe that this person allegedly did this to this mother and these two little girls. He is absolutely, absolutely a horrible human being if he committed these crimes. And get this, y'all. 36-year-old Daniel Callahan wasn't the only one arrested for these crimes. There was another suspect arrested, 32-year-old Victoria Cox. She was arrested in South Jackson, Mississippi at a hotel and was booked for capital murder. We do not know Victoria Cox's involvement. She is not speaking at all. She is maybe the possible girlfriend of the suspect, 36-year-old Daniel Callahan, but no one really knows. And get this, y'all. Y'all want to hear something crazy? 32-year-old Victoria Cox, mother of three, three beautiful children, a mother of her own, lived less than a mile from the murder victim, Callie Brunette. Less than a mile down the street, possibly on the same street. But did they know each other? What was the connection between Daniel Callie and Victoria. It was said that Daniel Callahan and Callie Brunette were in, in an on and off relationship. It was also said by another source that they dated 13 years ago. Do I think that's true? Absolutely. Why do I think that's true? Because when I saw there was a murder victim and two little girls missing, I said to myself, this is my personal opinion. I said, the murder victim and the suspect knew each other. Why do I say that? Because I do not think a random person would come into a house, murder the mother, and take the two children without any type of knowledge of each other. Could it happen? Absolutely. Has it happened? Yes. But in this case, I said to myself, there was a connection. The, the suspect knew the mother and the two kids in some type of way. I also believe this because reporters interviewed Dixie Himmel, which is Daniel Callahan's half-sister, and this is what Dixie said. She said that she received messages off of Callie's Facebook the day prior saying that it was an emergency. She said that he called me like 13 times off a of messenger asking for money, but wanted me to call, not text. She decided to call the police in Louisiana to report her brother's possible involvement. Dixie says she's not surprised by his actions because her family tried to warn authorities. She said if authorities would have listened to them two years ago in Lincoln County, Dixie says that she believes this behavior stemmed from their mother's abusive situation. She said the situation that her and her brother had was horrible, that they grew up with the situation they grew up with didn't help. She said they watched men do things to their mother because she owed them money. 
The men also did things to the kids. She said her brother is a master manipulator. She also states her brother would sleep just fine during what he did to those two little girls and their mother. He thought he would get away with murder. And get this, y'all. Y'all ready for this? The apple didn't fall far from the tree because Daniel Callahan wasn't the only murderer in his family. Daniel Callahan wanted to be like his father. He wanted to succeed his father. He wanted to write a book. And who was Daniel Callahan's father? Kelly Wayne Drott. According to reports back in 1990, 18-year-old Rebecca Forbes did not come home after visiting the Italian festival in Independence, Louisiana, another area around Hammond. Her body was found three weeks later. She had been in the river for three weeks on a sand pile. Callahan's father, Kelly, admitted to meeting Rebecca. She got into his car. He beat her to death, then dumped her body in the Tangipahoa River. He pled guilty to manslaughter, saying it was an accident, and was given 25 years. However, he escaped his New Orleans prison and went on the run with another woman, whom he later shot. Then he kidnapped a teenage girl and later shot himself to death as police moved in. Daniel Callahan also has a very long criminal history. Started in 2006 when he was only 18, he was arrested for a simple burglary. In 2008, he was arrested for a simple assault on a family member, theft, aggravated battery, and unauthorized entry of an automobile. So he has a very long and detailed criminal background. According to Tangipahoa Parish, his alleged accomplice, Victoria Cox, didn't have a prior criminal history in the parish. James Alamont was Daniel Callahan's neighbor. He says that his home sat right behind Daniel Callahan's camper. And he said Daniel Callahan would constantly shout out threats and constantly talked about being locked up, how he wanted to be locked up, locked up, locked up, locked up. That's all he would talk about is how he wanted to be locked up. He was tired of life. But if he wanted to be locked up so bad, if he wanted to be away and he was tired of life, why did he commit these crimes this is the way you want to get locked up. This is what you want to do. You want to take two people's lives. You want to end a four-year-old's life because you want to be locked up. That is selfish. That is cruel. That is inhumane. And I'm going to insert a video now of Daniel, of Daniel Callahan confessing to murder. Like Unfortunately, all that's a problem. Sober, no drugs in my system. I did. Why? Why did you kill the three year old girl? I have no reason for what I did. All I know is I want to say I was sober and only on Lexapro and off Lexapro. And I'm also diagnosed with borderline with a multiple personality disorder. And I have not got to talk to a lawyer. And I'm on suicide watch, but I'm not suicidal. But did you I think it's the I think it was the side effects of the Lexapro. Did you kill her mom? Her mom. Here we go. I'm at Rick and John Joe, like an uh, interview. Do you regret what you did? Do you regret what you did? I would kill me, and I'm gonna. I am. Uh, I have told them everything that I did, and I have agreed to not fight it. Speedy trial, and the uh, the chamber. Whatever it is. Do you hope for the death penalty? For what I did? Lethal injection is the easiest thing for me. Are you pretending to be crazy? No, I'm not pretending to be crazy. Look me up in Region 8. Borderline multiple personality disorder. You better look it up. So you have to be crazy. Okay, yeah. I'm certified. I was only at the house two weeks now. Side effects of Lexapro and borderline multiple personality disorder is very sad. Could it be the side effects of Lexapro? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I can't diagnose someone. But I can bring y'all back to the year of 1998 when Bryn Hartman killed her famous comedian husband, Phil Hartman. She shot him and then shot herself. And Bryn's family says the reason why this happened was the side effects of Zoloft, which, which is another antidepressant medication the family sued Zoloft and said that the reason why Brynn committed these crimes was because she had Zoloft in her system. And it was said that um, it was settled out of court, the suit. So I don't know what happened. 
So could it happen? Maybe, I don't know. Could there be side effects that made Daniel Callahan do these things? Maybe, who knows? We're gonna know more whenever a psychiatrist speaks with Daniel. Borderline multiple personality disorder is a mental illness. And as always, as I tell y'all all the time, mental illness is real. I repeat, mental illness is real. People are not just crazy. People have mental illness disorders that can lead them to do things that we wouldn't normally do. People have illnesses. And I used to think that people were crazy, that people just did things. There was no such thing as mental illness. I am a firm believer now after covering all these cases there is mental illness out there and there is a way for people to get help. If this is true, Daniel Callahan says that he was diagnosed with this. If his diagnosis is true, he needs to seek help for his disorder. Something isn't right with him. And I, as I always say to all of you, mental illness is real and people do have certain things that go on in their mind that they cannot control and makes them do different things. So if you or someone you know is suffering from a mental illness, please seek the help that y'all need and that y'all deserve because it is nothing to be ashamed of. If you have a mental illness and you want to get help, please do it. Please get the help that you need in order to help you and others around you. My final thought, you know, I always give y'all my final thought. My final thought is, I think that Daniel Callahan wanted to be a killer. His sister said he wanted to succeed his father, which he did. He wanted to write a book. He was also telling neighbors how he wanted to be locked up. He was tired of life. I think that Daniel Callahan was a very disturbed individual. I think he had a very bad childhood, a very unhappy childhood between his mother and his father, according to his sister. I think that from the young age of 18, he was already getting arrested for things. I think he was gonna, he was always gonna lead this criminal lifestyle, which he did. But if that's what he wanted to do, if he wanted to be like his father, if he wanted to succeed his father, if he wanted to be a killer like his father, why did he have to go this route? Why? Why didn't Daniel Callahan, if he knew he had a mental illness, if he knew he was on Lexapro and he had no drugs in his system, he admitted to this killing and he is asking for the death penalty. Why didn't he get the help he needs? Why? Why didn't he go to a facility and stay there, see a psychiatrist? Why didn't he listen to people when people, it was said people offered to get him help. Why didn't he want that? But in the back of my mind, I keep saying to myself, he had a mental illness. He was not right in the head. But in my opinion, no matter what, he is a monster. To take the life of a mother and a four-year-old baby and no telling what the six-year-old went through, and that is evil. It is the work of the devil. It is a very evil crime that he committed. Why? 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 Why are the words? Why did he think he had to do this? We don't even know what happened with Callie. What could have happened in her home that he walked in and brutally murdered her and took her children? What was the incident? I am wondering all of the the details the details haven't come out yet and i'm i'm waiting for them to come out because i want to know exactly what happened what went down for daniel callahan to just walk into this house and commit these murders something happened and it was also said that the prosecution will be seeking the death penalty do i believe that's true yes because this crime if there's anything with the death penalty if anyone deserves a death penalty, I think this jury would give Daniel Callahan the death penalty, especially if he confesses and just wants a speedy trial. He says he did it and he wants a death penalty. And he said that's the least they can do for him is lethal injection. We don't know uh, the involvement with 32-year-old Victoria Cox. We don't know what she did. We don't know what happened. But when I saw her smiling in jail, 
That's not right, y'all. And she's the mother of three. She has three beautiful children. Beautiful, gorgeous children. When I saw the pictures, I was shocked. She was a loving mother with three kids. Like, What happened? What was her involvement? That's what I want to know. And her smiling? Come on now. She knows better than that. She has three kids of her own. What happened? The details, we will find out soon. I will let y'all know updates as soon as we have updates. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope that y'all like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to press on that notification bell so you never miss a video from me. There is also a GoFundMe, and I will put the link down below in the comments so y'all can donate to the Brunette family. My heart goes out to the Brunette family. I hope that Callie and Aaron are resting in peace. And I hope that little Jaylee Brunette, who is now with her grandparents in Louisiana, is getting the help she needs and that she remembers all the loving memories with her little sister and her mother. And as always, stay safe. Always be aware of your surrounding. You never know who's around. Y'all can always message me with requests. And I'm here for y'all, anything that y'all need. And as always, thank you so much for your, all y'all support. Thank y'all for watching. I appreciate all of you. And for you, I am truly grateful. I love all of y'all. I hope y'all have a good night and I will see y'all later. Bye.